What's up guys? Welcome to Mass Effect Talks. This episode is going to be about the Protheans. Mass Effect Talks for this week and for next week is going to be uh, pretty interesting and I think important information for Mass Effect 3. Um, like, I, like I said, this video is going to be about the Protheans and the next Mass Effect Talks is going to be about the Reapers. So I think these topics are going to be very important for Mass Effect 3 because Bioware already confirmed that the Protheans are going to play a major role for Mass Effect 3. And there was already speculation before then, I, I, said, I mentioned this in, in another Mass Effect Talks, that there was possibly going to be a Prothean uh, squad member, like a, like a, D a DLC that was a Prothean. Now whether Bioware is still going to do this, I don't know. They removed that off of the 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 special edition uh, Mass Effect 3, so I don't know if they're just trying to keep that secret still, or or if they changed their minds, or how the Protheans are going to be involved. But uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. What I do think is that it's pretty safe to say that the Protheans are going to play a major role in defeating the Reapers. I think it's that link between uh, humanity and uh, the Reapers, it's that, that, that gap where we're like, how the hell is Shepard going to kill the Reapers? How is he going to destroy them? There's so many, there are these crazy big ships that can just destroy you. How is he going to stop it? And I think the Protheans are the ones that have the key to destroying the Reapers. Some people have even said that they think that the voice on the official trailer, the first trailer of Mass Effect, um, not the teaser, but the one uh, that they announced on E3. Um, <coughs> the voice where where Shepard is is running on the Reaper on the Reaper leg, I believe it was. Uh, there's a voice that 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 is talking over that, and I don't remember exactly what he says, but something like, "We we have to find a way" or something like that to defeat the Reapers, something like that. Some people are saying that that's Captain Kirihi, the Salarian back on Vermeer from Mass Effect 1, um, and other people are actually saying that it sounds like a Prothean because of the, the, the tone of voice. They said it sounds a lot like Vigil, uh, the Prothean uh, like AI back on Ilos in Mass Effect 1. And I was listening to, uh, to Vigil, and it, I, I could see a little bit of resemblance, but not too much, so I don't know. It sounds a little more like Kirihi, but... Who knows, because Kirihi does die in some people's playthroughs, so I really don't know who that is, but I think it, it there is a possibility that it's it might be Prothean. When you actually think about the Protheans being a big part of Mass Effect 3, it kind of makes sense as to why uh, Bioware never killed off Liara. Liara is basically your Prothean expert. She's like a Prothean anthropologist back in ME1, uh, you, you found this out. And she, she knows everything about the Protheans. So I think Bioware from the beginning um, always knew that they were going to need Liara in Mass Effect 3. Uh, so that, you know, you could probably know more about the Protheans, know what to expect and stuff like that. So to have her there as like a resource uh, for when you actually started to deal with the Protheans more than in Mass Effect 1. Everybody has been fair game to die. Ashley or Caden could have died in Mass Effect 1. In uh, in Mass Effect 2, everybody else could have died also, even Shepard, except Liara. Liara was, she just could not, she, she's never been in that position where she was a possibility of dying. And I think it's maybe because Bioware really needs her for Mass Effect 3 when it comes to the Protheans. Another thing is if you remember in the Lair of the Shadow Broker downloadable content, you find out that the Shadow Broker had this special interest in the Protheans and that he was actually looking into that, uh, into the, the, the Protheans because there was this uh, interest there. And now that Liara is the new Shadow Broker for Mass Effect 3, she's probably going to have access, well not probably, she is going to have access to all the information that the Shadow Broker probably found out about the Protheans. So let's get the topic actually started. So who are the, the, the Protheans? They're an extinct race, of course. They were extinct by the Reapers. The Reapers completely, uh, it was a complete genocide. They completely killed 
they completely killed all the Protheans. It's been 50,000 years since they were destroyed. Their appearance is that they're humanoid, and by that I mean that they have a head, they have two arms, they have two legs, they stand upright, they have long tentacles for fingers and toes, and they have tentacle beards coming down from here. They seem to be a little taller than humans, and they're slim, but this is just a uh, speculation because the only uh, the only images that we have of the Protheans are very blurry uh, parts of Shepard's vision, um, which you can't really tell what they look like in the in the vision. Uh, but there are also uh, statues, statues that were back on Ilos, and there was also a statue in the Kasumi downloadable content. I believe Donovan Hawk uh, had had a statue of a Prothean in his museum, and it looks like that. Now, whether this is a Prothean, nobody has ever said that's a Prothean, or maybe that was, I don't know, you know how uh, when it comes to like Egyptian statues, um, sometimes the statues are kind of exaggerated, like exaggerated versions of what the person actually looked like, so it could be a little bit exaggerated, uh, but I, th I think the Protheans do look like they do in the statues. They were a very smart species and they focused a lot in science and technology. They were the only species in their time, the only space-faring species, so they were the only ones. Uh, it, it wasn't like it is in the present for Mass Effect where there are different different races, you know, traveling the, the, the galaxy. In in the, Pro in the time of the Protheans, the only ones that traveled the galaxy were the Protheans. Their government, their central government, was on the Citadel, just like it is for the races uh, in Mass Effect. That's how it was. The Citadel was their central government and where everything took place. Their means of communication was very similar to the Asari where they, they kind of like downloaded and uh, transferred information from one mind to another. So it's kind of like the Asaris, where they, they kind of connect um, mentally. Uh, the Protheans did that as well. And they also communicated through beacons. So those are the beacons that you, like, for, for example, the beacon that you found in Eden Prime uh, in Mass Effect 1. Those beacons were almost, they almost worked like the internet where you would send like they would send uh, like emails to each other and each planet where that where they where they where they uh, lived they had a beacon and that's how they would communicate with each other another really interesting thing about the Protheans was that they were really interested in studying other species that were just evolving um, and one of those species is the human they uh, they had an outpost on Mars, and they actually observed the humans, like the, the early, early humans. I mean, like cavemen. They would, uh, they would observe them because they were interested in to see how they would evolve and how, how they worked together and all that. So they, they observed the humans um, particularly. And they also, uh, the Hanar also speak of the Enkindlers, and the Enkindlers are actually the Protheans. So they, uh, they worship the Protheans in a religious way uh, because the Protheans actually civilized the Hanar. They brought them language and all that. So not that much is known about the Protheans just because they lived so long ago and it's hard to find anything that was left of the Protheans. Um, some things that you find, you, you find, I think, uh, Mass Effect 1 has so much more about the Protheans than Mass Effect 2. Because you have like little side missions where you find Prothean data disks on different planets that have some information about Prothean culture and, and science and all that. But they're actually, uh, they're not very easily uh, studied. You can't really, not, not, not many people understand what is on the data or how to even read it. So the Prothean outposts on Mars, um, they speak of this in uh, Mass Effect 1, I believe. Uh, the that they found this um, outpost on Mars, and the way they found it was they were re they were getting readings of this magnetic field. So scientists investigated these magnetic fields on Mars to see what it was, and they uncovered a, a Prothean uh, outpost. And the crazy thing is that it's it was still struggling to even work after fifty thousand years. 
So you can imagine how how good the Prothean technology is that it was still emitting this magnetic field. It was still working even after fifty thousand years of neglect. I mean, no, no, no maintenance, nothing. So when they found when humanity found this uh, outpost, that's when they they realized that they weren't alone. That's when they realized that there were other alien races out there. So that's when they just you know, took off and started to explore the galaxy. So when the, 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 the Protheans were wiped out by the Reapers, this is called the Cataclysm. And that's when the Reapers just completely obliterated the Protheans. And they didn't, they didn't kill them, like, right away. It took years for them to completely, completely obliterate the race. A lot of people think that the Protheans had, uh, had formed the mass relays, that they had created the mass relays and that they created the citadel but it's not so in mass effect one uh, Shepard finds out on Vermeer that the Protheans actually found the mass relays and they found the citadel as it, as it as it is and they just used it the citadel is actually a re is actually a relay and the where the citadel leads it leads into dark space so that's how the Reapers would come destroy the citadel first and then once the citadel was destroyed the main the place where the the races their their government basically so they would they would cripple a race by ki by destroying their government first and then destroy everybody else that was you know without a leader basically and then on the citadel uh, the protheans that's where they had all their information all their charts all their census data for every every uh, Prothean in the galaxy, everything. So the Reapers just looked at that and they were like, okay, let's go here, 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 and destroy them all. So th that th the Citadel was the ultimate trap for them. And the only ones that survived were the, were the scientists on Ilos. And the only reason why they survived was because that facility was top secret. Nobody knew about it. So there was no, no information about that facility on the Citadel, so the Reapers didn't know about this facility. So there was a good amount of Protheans there, scientists, and also uh, like staff. So the ones that were alive, when they started to find out what was going on, they they just stayed there, and they were like, "We're the ones that are gonna have to do something about this." But they actually waited. They waited until until the Prothean race was gone, because if they said anything, if they tried to communicate with anybody through a beacon. Um, the Reapers would find out about them. So they didn't say anything, and they had to wait until the Reapers were done killing all the Protheans, and then try to do something about it. Try to do something about preventing the Reapers from doing this again. So the, the, the Protheans that the Reapers didn't kill, they actually enslaved them and indoctrinated them. And there are some uh, Protheans that you see, I believe, in Mass Effect 1, that are husks. You know, they're not alive or anything, but there were husk protheans. But not only husks, there were also indoctrinated protheans that actually betrayed their own kind. They, they were sent as uh, reaper agents, and they betrayed uh, their own kind, and they all died. After the reapers finished killing most of the protheans, it's, not, it's unknown whether they kept the, the, the protheans that were indoctrinated or husks. Or, uh, but they, but it is known that they did leave some behind, and they just they weren't able the the, the Protheans that were indoctrinated weren't able to survive they, because they didn't have minds of their own. So they just they just died. They 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 didn't have enough food. They didn't. What else were they gonna do, right? But uh, in Mass Effect Two, when you find out that the Collectors were once Protheans, you stop to think. Well, then that means that the Reapers must have kept some Protheans in order to make the Collectors. It actually took centuries for the Reapers to destroy completely uh, the Prothean race. And they didn't just kill the Protheans, they tried to destroy as much as possible that the, Proth the Protheans had left behind. Because they didn't want to give any hints that a, that a race had been obliterated by something. Because it would kind of give away the reapers uh, the, the reapers plan